And Bobby says, uh, absolutely and totally not. We don't agree with that. You cannot, you took an oath, you can't admit that there's a mafia. I sat down with Sammy the Bull Gravano to discuss a selection of mobsters from across the five families who over the years have allegedly served in their respective families' administrations. In this video, we talk about the Genovese crime family. Let's move to the Genovese family, which is often a bit tricky because throughout the 70s, um, there's a lot of dispute about who was actually their boss. Um, a lot of the names put forward, obviously, Fonzie Thierry, um, Philip, Benny Squint Lombardo. Um, do you know much about who was who you, who you were told was in charge of the Genovese family in the 70s? Yes, it was Benny Squint was the boss. Benny Squint was going away. Well, I think he was going to prison. I'm not sure what he, where he was going. And he was leaving. I know of a meeting he had with uh, Chin Gigante. He told Chin Gigante, he says, I want your word. I'm going to leave Fat Tony as the boss. I want your word that you won't kill him and take over. So it was Benny Squint who was the boss. And uh, it was Fat Tony who was the boss. He, he either died or went to prison or whatever happened to him. Fat Tony became the boss. Um, Chin Giganti wasn't too happy with him. I was at a commission meeting one time just as a security. But they came in. Fat Tony walked in first. Chin was behind him, walked in. And Chin looked at me and uh, Frankie, the Chico, and it just made a face like, as if like, like, you know, he wasn't too happy with Benny, the way he was running the family. So it didn't mean nothing to us, but um, later on, I was in Paul Castellano's house years later, and uh, I was in a meeting talking about unions and stuff like that and construction and uh, there was four or five people. I think DB was there, a whole bunch of people. And Tommy Bellotti walked in and said, Paul, uh, I just got word that Benny stepped down and Chin is the boss. So it was Benny Squint, then Fat Tony, then Chin. Yeah, Benny's, Benny Squint, um, he retired down to Florida and then died in about 87. And uh, the other guy, Terry, you know, they try to confuse the government and the newspapers. Who's the boss? They always did that bullshit. So Terry, um, they said he was a street boss. But it did confuse a lot of guys. Nobody realized you know, who is the boss. And they, and they did that purposely. Not to fool the mob, but to fool the news media and the feds and who the fuck your boss is. And Terry was a tough guy and he was out of Benson Arts, Brooklyn. Um, he used to stay in a, in a bar where Sally Dogs used to be, Sally Dogs' uncle who's a captain, and he frequented that bar a lot, a lot. So he was in my neighborhood, and uh, he was a tough guy. Uh, fun days to call him Funz a while. Mm. And, uh, and uh, he's one of the guys who actually, they used him to sit with Tony Bananos in Philadelphia and to tell him if uh, Angelo Bruno wasn't around anymore, you, Tony Bananos, would pro he was the concierge of the Philadelphia yeah. family, you would become the boss and we would have a lot of interests then together. So they gave him a wink, he did, Terry, a wink and a nod, get this done, and uh, we'll represent you in the commission. Yeah, they, they set him up. They really set him up. They set him up big time because as soon as he did his work, they killed him to get rid of him. Yeah. Him and his brother-in-law. Uh, his brother-in-law was uh, um, um, Messina. Uh, Alfredo, um, his first name was. Okay, so in terms of the chins in charge in the 80s, um, what do you know much about um, Louis Bobby Manor, who became consigliere at one point? Yes, I know a lot about him. I met him a bunch of times. We had taken over. Um, when there was a, a, the commission case, a 
Carmine Persico wanted to admit that there's a mafia. And, you know, the Ku Klux Klan could admit, all these things could admit, we could admit, and it won't be such a crime. Nobody agreed with him. Uh, me and Frank and Chico went to Bobby Manor, and we were, brought that question. John Gotti asked us to go to him. And we went to him, we said, he, he wants this to happen. What's your opinion, your family? And Bobby says, um, absolutely and totally not. We don't agree with that. You cannot, you took an oath, you can't admit that there's a mafia. So, and Bobby, when we talked about something, I remember him telling us one time, Sammy, Frankie, I'm not going to discuss business and business deals. All I discuss is goes in Austria. I'm the Gonzia. That's all I talk about. I'm not interested in businesses or anything like that. Take it up with somebody else. So he was really strict about the way he was. He was very strong in his crew. Years later, um, the agents went to John Gotti and said, listen, we're required by law. We have to tell you that there's a hit on you. John said, who's, who's doing it? And they said, well, that we don't have to tell you. And we're not going to tell you. We're just telling you that there's a hit. We have to tell you. So John said, then go fuck yourself. And I remember the agent told John on the way out of the bathroom, they caught him in the bathroom. He says, listen, I know about the hit. I hope, it, I hope they're successful. The agent told John. And they left. Um, Bobby Manor and his crew was ordered by Chin to kill John Gotti. And they got caught when they were assembling their team and how they were going to do it. They got caught on tape. One of them, he's still alive. He's 90 something years old, 94, 95. And uh, one of his charges is the conspiracy to kill John Gotti. And uh, so I knew him not personally as a friend, but I knew him a couple of times. I bunked into him with different situations. I knew guys who were under him, and they talked very highly of him. Um, I know Chin thought the world of him. He got pinched. He got a lifetime sentence. I think he's in 40 years. He's 94, 95, and he can't even get a fucking, uh, he's dying. Yeah, he can't get compassionate release. He can't even get a compassionate release. And I've been trying to push for that. I did some paperwork on that, but I can't, I can't help him. I hope you enjoyed that. Look out for our next video, where we continue to discuss mobsters who served in the administration of their crime family.